In this series, I'm going to show you how to do machine learning with Python. But before that, I have to explain some concepts. Let's start with some history, beginning with artificial intelligence. It started all in 1950s when computers are becoming more prevalent. Basically, experts were asking if computers can think. Uh, that led to the beginning of uh, artificial intelligence, which can formally be defined as the effort to automate intellectual tasks that are normally performed by human. At the beginning, we all had symbolic AI, which uh, started between 1950s and flourished until 1980s, in which programmers crafted sophisticated set of explicit rules for computers to follow. Uh, this worked really well for structured, well-defined settings, such as the game of chess. As you can imagine, in a game of chess, you have a predefined set of rules uh, therefore, there is no surprises. You can, you can think of a game of chess, no matter how long or complicated it is, as a complex set of if-then arguments, right? If uh, player uh, one moves this, uh, makes this particular move, then the second player should make the sec second move. And then, uh, based on the previous move, this is going to be the best move by the first player again, and so forth, right? So you can imagine the game of chess as a very, very long chain of if-then uh, commands, right? However, this, uh, as you can imagine, becomes very uh, quickly becomes untraceable as soon as the setting gets complicated and uncertain, right? So when you don't know what is going to happen as a result of one action, uh, you in introduce probability into the and uncertainty into your setting, uh, then uh, then you can no longer follow a structured set of predefined if then rules to uh, to achieve your task. So settings such as uh, image recognition or language translation are uh, examples of where the symbolic AI uh, fails miserably. This uh, lady is a uh, lady uh, Ada Lovelace, uh, which uh, can be uh, credited with being the very first uh, computer programmer, actually. She collaborated on creating uh, what we know as uh, Analytical Engine, which was the first known general purpose mechanical computer. The Analytical Engine could only use mechanical operations to automate mathematical functions. And there is a quote uh, a very famous code by uh, Lady Ada Lovelace that uh, about this analytical engine that reads, um, the analytical engine has no pretensions to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform. Its province is to assist us in making available what's, uh, what we are already acquainted with. In other words, she was commenting on uh, symbolic AI. Uh, she was com commenting on uh, on the very first general purpose computers, and she had a very pessimistic view of them, uh, and was basically saying that these computers can only help us do the things that we can already do. Uh, their utility is that uh, they can probably do it very faster. So, for example. Uh, if you do, uh, if you want to do a set of complex calculations, well, obviously you know how to do them, uh, but it is much faster and much easier if you ask a computer to do them, right? And uh, that was uh, that was what she was uh, thinking of uh, of computers. And, and and remember, it was in 1800s, uh, so uh, she was way, way, way ahead of her time. However, this gentleman, uh, Alan Turing, uh, the pioneer of modern AI, uh, had a different uh, point of view. In a very seminal paper called Computing Machinery and Intelligence, he was basically asking the following question. He was asking, can computers go beyond what we order it to perform and learn on its own how to perform a specific task? In other words, uh, he was basically responding to what he labeled as uh, Lady Lovelace's objection and, and concluded that general purpose computers are actually capable of learning and surprising us by being original and coming up with, their, with the solutions that 
uh, were not programmed into them. The effort to basically uh, achieve uh, this uh, uh, feature, uh, to achieve learning and originality, basically started the modern artificial intelligence, which is very different from symbolic AI. Uh, one way we can, uh, we can define uh, symbolic AI is through this very simple uh, representation. In symbolic AI, uh, you have to have the data uh, and also you have to program the set of rules uh, so that the symbolic AI gets the rules and the data from the programmer and then uh, uses those rules uh, in order to create results. Uh, whereas in, in uh, machine learning, uh, you have uh, the data and the answers. Uh, they are both given to the machine learning system and based on the association between data and answers, the rules are discovered by the computer rather than being programmed into the computer by the programmer. In machine learning, the rules are, and associations are discovered uh, based on uh, the relationship between the data and the answers. And once the rules are discovered, the results are created. So you can think of machine learning as a subset of uh, overall artificial intelligence. To define it more formally, we can say that the machine learning system is trained rather than explicitly programmed. Uh, and uh, how, how does it work? It, the, the machine learning system is presented with many examples. Once the examples are given, then it's going to find the statistical structures within the example data. And once it, founds, uh, once it finds the statistical structures, it is going to use those structures to, to automate the future tasks. Let's, uh, let's go over it with a very, very simple example. Suppose that you have a data set that uh, includes uh, images of uh, cats and dogs. This is, uh, this is the data that you have. It is also going to include labels for each of these uh, images, right? So it's going to say whether or not this is a cat or, or not, right? So it, it is going to provide labels for each of these images. Uh, a machine learning system is going to use this data uh, and analyze the association between features of these images and the given labels. And once it uncovers the statistical relationship between the input data, which is the images or the features of these images, and uh, the, the labels, which are the name of these animals, uh, then once you give it a new image, it can use those associations that it has uncovered uh, itself from the data to answer the question and say whether this is a cat or a dog. So uh, very generally, we can categorize machine learning algorithms into two groups. The first one is supervised machine learning. It basically uses data which are labeled by humans and therefore the name supervised is, uh, is uh, stemming from. So uh, you have a set of independent that variable or a set of features and you also have uh, the, the answer uh, or the outcome uh, that is called the labeled. Uh, because the data is labeled, we can measure the accuracy of supervised machine learning uh, algorithms. And there are uh, two major uh, subcategories for supervised machine learning. The very first one is, uh, is used for classification purposes. And basically, it assigns test data into specific categories. The example that I just went uh, over, the, uh, the uh, classification of images into cat or dogs is an ex is an example of classification uh, task, which is a supervised machine learning uh, problem, and it is supervised because here uh, I was giving you uh, the labels. In other words, a human is involved uh, in in predefining the the answers, right? The labels or the classifications. Uh, the other uh, 
type of supervised machine learning algorithms is generally called regression. And regressions are used to predict numerical outcomes and explain the relationship between the variables. So if you have a data set of, say, uh, uh, individuals with COVID-19 infections and whether or not they survived it, uh, then you can answer questions such as how much more likely it is for a smoker, someone who smokes cigarettes, to die after a COVID-19 infection. So there you're going to have a data set that includes a bunch of features, say the age or gender, number of comorbidities, uh, the, the type of infection, and also uh, the smoking status of a set of patients that were hospitalized. And then you can see how each of these factors, including their smoking uh, status, is going to impact their chance of survival or dying from COVID-19. So the set of uh, methods that are going to help you predict numerical outcomes, and here the numerical outcome is a probability, right? It ranges from zero to 100. Um, numerical outcomes is is are, are grouped under this category of a regression now we also have unsupervised machine learning which you can uh, imagine uh, the term unsupervised comes from the fact that uh, there are there are no labels in the data meaning that uh, the the hidden patterns in the data are discovered without the need for human intervention. So there isn't going to be a correct answer. Therefore, there is no uh, measure of accuracy for these types of uh, uh, machine learning algorithms. And there are three general uh, groups of unsupervised machine learning. The very first one is called clustering. And clustering basically is uh, a set of algorithms that are designed to group unlabeled data based on their similarities. So here is a very simple example. If I ask the computer to cluster, say, four cities, uh, in my data set into two groups based on their distance. And I have the uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Miami, and Orlando. You can imagine that the computer can very easily uh, cluster Los Angeles and San Francisco together and then create Mi a cluster for Miami and Orlando, um, not because the computer has any uh, understanding of the concept of Miami and say, oh, you know, Miami is a very different city from San Francisco, uh, but the clustering is done based on uh, the distances uh, that computer calculates uh, among uh, all possible pairs of these cities and, and figures out that distance between Miami and Orlando is much shorter than the distance, say, between Miami and San Francisco. Therefore, it's going to create two clusters uh, in which Miami and Orlando are grouped together and Los Angeles and San Francisco are grouped together. Uh, now, the other one is the association rule mining, uh, which discovers interesting associations in the data, uh, basically looks at the features in the data set and see if one is related to others. So one very um, common example of the application of association rule mining is when you are shopping on Amazon and you can see that on, uh, on each product's page, it says customers who bought this item also bought these other items. And you see a set of other items that are very relevant to whatever uh, you are purchasing. Uh, these are done automatically using association rule mining techniques. And finally, uh, the other set of unsupervised machine learning techniques are the ones that are created for de reducing the dimensionality of the data, basically uh, summarizing and reducing the number of the features in the data set uh, into a more manageable number of features uh, while at the same time preserving as much information as possible. Uh, in this uh, series, uh, we are going to go over uh, both uh, supervised machine learning techniques and unsupervised machine learning techniques and learn how to implement them uh, in Python.